Getting access to mental health care in rural areas is a major challenge and one the Royal Flying Doctor Service is taking seriously. A new report from the service says while mental health disorders are no more common in the bush than in the city, the suicide rate in remote communities is twice as high. The ABC's Norman Hermont followed a Flying Doctor medical team for this report. In Broken Hill, they're getting ready for another day's work with final checks and a fill-up. We need to be in the air at 4.30, I think. The medical team is ready to go. They'll make multiple stops on this day, and increasingly, the focus is on mental health. In the bush, you have a lot of time by yourself. I mean, you just bottle stuff up, and um, you, sometimes you can't find an out. For Brendan Cullen, the pressure of managing a huge sheep station was taking its toll. Then he heard about an RFDS mental health clinic. Catching up um, with one of the mental health nurses gave me the tools to be able to work out how I go about living a day-to-day -day life. My life's a hell of a lot easier now than what it used to be. A new report from the Royal Flying Doctor Service looks at the state of mental health in remote and rural communities. There's no difference in the prevalence of mental health or mental illness between city and bush but people who live in the country get less access to care and they become sicker. Distance and isolation are huge challenges for those living with mental illness in the bush and the outback. The Royal Flying Doctor Service is a lifeline. Each year it flies hundreds of people experiencing mental illness out of remote communities for treatment. From 2013 to 2016 there were more than 2,500 medical evacuation flights due to mental disorders. In the opal mining town of White Cliffs, it's a busy day at the local clinic. Guess where I arrived this morning? The flu needles come through. Hey, Sue. Hi, Jane. Good to see you. Jane doesn't want to be identified. We haven't caught up for a little while, have we? She's reluctant to talk openly about the help she's getting. Without them, we would really be lost here. For Jane, it's something she tries to hide. Well, in a small community, it's not wise to talk to other people in town and mental health being, it does carry a stigma. Back on his station, Brendan Cullen says he sees that attitude changing in the bush. People get wind that someone's had a mental health problem. Uh, people talk now as opposed to, you know, let's go back five years even, 10 years. Uh, it was a closed, closed book. The RFDS says to do more, it's going to need more. Money and recognition. The challenges of treating mental health in remote Australia. Norman Hermont, ABC News, White Cliffs, New South Wales.